Let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break down, I wrote down some notes here that we're gonna go through and see if I can't help you a little bit in understanding groove and how to develop groove. <sighs> groove is a weird word because groove can exist anywhere. Groove can exist in blues music and jazz music and country music and metal music and rock music and certainly in funk music. Um, and oftentimes when I teach people how to play guitar, you know, one of the first, well, there's two things that we mostly focus on. We focus on learning chords and how to change those chords and things like that. And then we learn about rhythm and rhythm is one of those things that people, Hey everybody, rhythm is one of those things that people tend to struggle with quite a bit. So what I want to do today is just kind of explain to you some things that you can work on. Now, if you're at work or, you know, I see there's people from all over the world here. So if it's one o'clock in the morning and you're not practicing, <laughs> I totally understand. You can always come back to this video later and, um, and study some of these things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by just talking about the idea of groove. There's two things I want you to understand about rhythm that I think about in my head. There's down strumming, prominent down strumming when you play. Now, don't really worry about my guitar tones and things like that. I'm not going to worry about trying to change all, all these different sounds and stuff, but let's say I was playing more down strummy stuff. We'll go there. We get these really raw, what I call Cro-Magnon kinds of sounds when we strum down. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying when we do a lot of down strumming, we get this sort of raw ACDC kind of sound. <laughs> thing when we play. And it's a great way of learning how to play. But there's the other way of playing, which is learning how to strum down and up alternately. <laughs> which you might hear, you know, commonly in an eagle song or something like that. You know, all that sort of thing. And so before I even go on to anything else, thank you everybody for being here. I see we have more people that keep showing up. I appreciate the fact that you love my channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much. These two things, learning how to do this down strumming, this sort of curl magnon strumming, and then learning how to do this alternate strumming, down up strumming, are really, really important because they sound different. Even though we can think of things logically in terms of quarter notes or eighth notes or something like that, it, the fundamental element might be the same, but the sound is different. So when you're playing things and you're playing it all down, and again, I'm not going to play, especially with all this Article 13 stuff going on and all this sort of thing. I'm not going to worry about playing too much for songs. And even if I do, I'm going to play them a little bit different. Okay. But when we think about playing. <laughs> prominent down strums. We get this real aggression where if I was to take that and turn it upside down and start doing some down ups. <laughs> you're going to notice that all of a sudden it just smooths out. Okay, so understand as we go into this, I'm, I'm not going to show you anything that has a right or wrong answer. It's just trying to give you some different things to think about a little bit as you're practicing and see if we can't make it a little bit better for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to talk about a technique that I love talking about, which is scratching. Scratching is one of the first things I teach people how to do, and I keep reminding them that it's important to continue doing to learn to develop rhythm. So if we were to just touch all six strings, doesn't matter where, just touch all six strings so they're deadened. So you're getting that sound, okay? So what we can do is we can start planning out our attack on strumming. Hey everybody, we can keep planning our attack on our strum. And we can not focus on chords, we can drop all that stuff out for the time being. And we're just working on strumming. Now, the first thing I want you to understand about strumming is that strumming has two really important elements. Number one, dynamics. Your ability to add loud and soft elements when you play. And this doesn't require a song or a jam track. It's just you hanging out with your guitar playing some music, right? And you're just trying to... Hey, everybody. Okay? But it really gets interesting when you start adding the ups in between. So 
So there's two things I want you to think about. What we're going to be focusing on most today is this alternate strumming, down up strumming. Okay. And one is the dynamic element. Okay. Loud and soft. And you can add, for instance, if you, if you accent or strum louder on a down, it's going to be kind of an obvious thing because that's what we normally do. But what I want you to also try and do is accent on up strums. Now I'm not making up any particular pattern. I'm not sitting there in my head thinking down, 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 up, anything like that. I'm just, I'm just moving to this, this rhythm in my head. So if you've got your guitar, I want you to do this with me. If you don't, it's okay. You can do this later, but don't negate how important this is. Okay. Learning how to, how to have a groove, a natural rhythmic element to your playing, regardless of the style of music you play is going to make your music better. But we tend to just go for the jugular all the time. It's always about scales and it's always about speed and all these other things. And I'm not saying those are bad. Those are wonderful. But if you don't develop a real sense of groove, it's really hard to play with other people. It's hard to play with other musicians, right? And if you've got a musician that you're playing with that doesn't have much of a groove, a drummer or a bass player or somebody like that, it's hard to play along with them. Okay. So rhythm cannot be underestimated, even though, you know, the bright lights always tell us about soloing and scales and, and I get it. I've been there my whole life. Okay. But learning to develop a real authentic rhythm is just going to help you so much. Okay. Now, the first element we talked about was dynamics, loud and soft strumming. The next thing I want you to think about is strumming variants. Okay. And basically what we want to do is we want to try and learn to hit and miss strings or strums at different times. Now, again, I'm not creating a strumming pattern. I'm not going, that's not what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just moving my hand back and forth, right? I'm just doing this and I'm practicing dynamics. Okay. But the second thing I really need is this strumming variance. And what I mean by that is you're going to move away from the strings once in a while to actually create space. Okay. So as I'm doing this, now watch what I do. See how I'm moving away from the strings? So I'm actually missing some strums, which is creating space, which is creating a rhythmic variance, I'm calling it, okay? I'm not worried about which ones I'm hitting, which ones I'm missing. I'm just trying to find a groove. AF says go strum. You can totally think of it that way, okay? The trick is you're just creating space. That's what you're doing, okay? And the more authentic you can try and make this whole thing, the less you're thinking about ta's and tt's and you know, eighth notes and 16th notes and all this sort of thing. You're just trying to feel something. So again, be careful to fight that, that evil demon we call speed, which is always that thing that brings us down, right? We try and do things too fast and we don't really understand what we're doing. And we get, fr you know, we stop and then we get frustrated and then we start again and only we're going faster because we're more frustrated. Just relax. Okay, just relax and learn to feel this thing as you play. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna take your whole day or evening doing this, okay? So I'm gonna keep going to some other things and then you can keep watching this, you know, when you have some more time. But the next step, what we're gonna do to do is we're gonna start trying to add the third element in, which is a single string. Now what I'm doing to do that is I'm touching all six strings, but what I'm actually doing is I'm touching these five strings with my first finger. So that way when I strum, you hear the sixth string. 
Hear that? And then what I do is use the rest of my hand to scratch. Now you can put this hand anywhere you want, okay? What you're doing is you're trying to learn how to, it's almost like a Steve Ray Vaughan thing, where you're learning how to hit more than one string, but you're only hearing one string. Now, I'm not hitting all six strings with equal velocity. I'm really trying to target that six string but I'm protecting myself by touching the other five strings so they don't make sound, okay? And also it can add to the percussion element of this, okay? So now what I can do is I can take this dynamic thing I was using, missing the strings, which we're calling rhythmic variance, okay? And now I'm applying it to the sixth string, but what I also want you to notice is I'm lifting my hand to create this sound on the sixth string. So it's not always happening like this. Because the string would never die, right? So what I'm doing is I'm implementing both strumming and scratching, I call it, okay? Now the beauty of this is, is what you have to understand is there's, there's not an absolute to this, okay? The strumming pattern won't be exactly the same every time. The dynamics won't be exactly the same, okay? There's a bit of inaccuracy, if you want to call it that, okay? Which is what makes this raw. It's what makes it sound so cool is that sometimes it is a little noisier than other times. Sometimes when you scratch, you get a harmonic from somewhere or one of the other strings starts vibrating. That's okay. Okay, it's learning to control this and understand that it all can't be perfect. Okay, quick story. I was in the studio one time with one of my old professors. This was long after I was out of college, but he was a professor of mine from college. And I was playing this acoustic part and it was drop tuned and I was playing the part in the studio. Uh, the singer had just finished her part and I was, I was playing this thing. And I kept getting these sliding sounds that were real prominent on the acoustic. And I came out of the the recording uh, room and I was really frustrated and he's like, well, what's going on? So well, I keep getting all these sounds and he's like, yeah, it's a guitar. And that's what it does. And I was like, yeah, it's a natural element. Okay. It, it, it doesn't all have to be perfect. Sometimes it's those inaccuracies that really kind of make it sound cool. Right? So when you're doing this, Again, speed could be your enemy, so be careful of that. But trying to make everything exact, sometimes we do. Sometimes some songs, some situations need to be that, absolutely. But in this particular situation, we're trying to find a groove more than we are try trying to play something absolutely accurate, okay? So if that kind of makes sense. So that's what we're gonna start off with is understanding that. So if you're brand new to any of this, you start by scratching and you focus on accenting or dynamics. Then you start missing strings, which is what I call rhythmic variance. And you're just doing that. You're just hanging out. People have got some great, I'm seeing the, the chat here. People have got some great ideas going on here of some music that you could listen to. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff out there. But it's so great because it's so free. Like you could just sit here for an hour and just practice this stuff. Right? And once you kind of get that going, then you start trying to add in this more complex part, which is that sixth string. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move in and I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples of songs that use more of a crow magnon kind of strum that I talked about in the beginning. And again, I'm not talking negative, I'm just saying matter of fact, it's more down strum, more power versus this kind of groove strum, okay? But I'm not gonna use any names and I'm gonna try and play it just a little bit slower or faster than they normally are so uh, the video doesn't get blocked, right? So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do here is this. I'll go to this camera angle here. Okay. 
So you've probably heard that song before, okay? It's funky, and if you like to play music, that's a really good one for you to do, okay? Now this one, this one's based more on a down strum. Okay, so now you'll notice everything's more cro magnet it's tighter, everything's back together again. Real solid, okay? And then the next part is, just so you know, 5-7-5-7. Five, seven, five, seven. Okay? Now again, that doesn't, by saying cro magnet it always seems like it sounds like I'm being negative. I'm not. It's a great sound. Somebody had mentioned, uh, Juan had mentioned Frusciante, which is perfect. Okay? These are great sounds that you can get. Okay? So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you another one, and then I'm going to show you a little a second exercise I want you to try and mess around with a little bit here, okay? So this one is going to go... Now that one is from Stevie Wonder. It goes like this. So it's 7-5-7-5, seven, 7-5-7. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Okay, but to play that one more accurate, it sounds better if you get this going. Notice how I'm hitting that six string at the end and the beginning. Now, how do you learn how to play like that? If you're watching that going, oh, that sounds really cool, but I don't get it. Okay, so let's try and look at this once. Let's make an exercise out of this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go like this. So it's half groove, half curl magnet, right? When I get to the bump, 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 I just want to hit those downs. And once you kind of get used to that, here's the second one I want you to try and do. The next one's going to go like this. Uh, let's, let's see here. Now what I want you to notice is on this one right here, I'm actually doing it on an upstrum. So if you listen, I've got that, that first down that I'm doing on a zero, and the next one's that seven. Then I've got one, one scratch and then an upstrum. Now again, I don't want to get scientific about this, because that's not the way I want you to think about it anyway. And then I go back. I've got two scratches and then a down strum. And I know when I start talking like that, it sounds like science, right? But that's what you have to do is start learning how to feel those. That's why those, those first things that we just did are really important for you, okay? Because learning how to feel that groove when you're scratching and things like that will make the rest of this kind of come together. And speed is your enemy. Don't try and play this stuff fast. Even if you're going... But what I want you to notice is I'm hitting almost all the strings at all times. Okay, so yeah, what I'm doing is I'm laying this finger down over these five strings. So this is always controlling everything. And then the sixth string is allowed to ring out because I'm touching these bottom five. And of course, I can push on the fifth string when I need it. Right? Right there, I'm pressing on the this string. This string still or this finger still deadening all those strings. Now the other cool little trick, and again, I don't want you to get too caught up on all these little tricks, although I will tell them to you, but I don't want you to get lost in this stuff. Because even if it's messy and sloppy at first, it's okay. It's just learning how to feel the groove first and then tighten it up. But as I'm doing this, I can always take the index, the tip of my index finger and, and kind of push it into the sixth string, and then I can stop that string from vibrating. See that? So now I'm touching the tip of my, my first finger is touching the string, the sixth string, and it kills it.
see that? So this finger winds up touching that six string. When I want a scratch or I want it to deaden, I'll touch that six string and it'll go. Everything else underneath is deadened by my first finger, except what I want to push on. Okay? So again, if you look at, I've got a video out on YouTube that talks about Frankensteining. I don't remember if it's called Frankenstein or, but if you just type my name and, and look up Frankenstein or something like that, I'm sure you'll find it. But it talks about learning how to play a pentatonic scale and deaden out all the strings as you play to get that kind of kind of Steve Ray Vaughnish punch that you can get off of these strings. So that's a great video to look at if you want to study that a little bit further. Okay. So that kind of brings us, kind of wraps up the rhythm element of this thing of learning how to control those strings, decide if you want to strum down, decide if you want alternate strums, thinking about dynamics, think about strumming variants, if you will, okay? And just learning how to control this whole thing because that's where this cool stuff comes from. So even if you take something that's really simple, it doesn't have to be an entire riff or an entire song or something like that. It's just... <laughs> You know, and you can change it into whatever you want from there. You see? So um, somebody said, don't need scales for this lesson. Shouldn't stop you from trying this. No, no, no. And, and, and I see he was referring to Roy. Yeah, and learning scales is its own thing. Like there's all kinds of subsections of things that you can practice on a daily basis. I'm just saying learning how to feel groove starts with simply scratching. The first lesson I teach students, if I had a student that came in for a guitar lesson back when I used to do private lessons, if I had a student come in, I don't teach them chords, their first lesson. The first thing I teach them how to do is make rhythm, like we're talking about easier than all this stuff we're talking about, but just, just scratching. Because then they can go home and throw on a, an ACDC album or a Dwight Yoakam album, or it doesn't matter what it is, and they can start learning how to feel the rhythm. Because if I can get them to, to learn how to do that, this is just practice. Like learning how to play a D chord is just doing it enough, thinking about it the right way, you know, all that kind of stuff. But groove and rhythm is something that really needs to be kind of harnessed because it's, it's, it's not black and white. G is black and white. D is black and white, right? Yes, there are different ways we might be able to play it a little bit here and there, but for the most part, a D is D, F sharp, and A, and that's what it looks like. But groove and strumming is, has such a, a variable to it that we need to be thinking about that, okay? So let's see here. Let me see if I missed anything else before we go on to the next little section here, and then I'll let you go. Studying this with, studying with electroacoustic, that's perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the kind words, everybody. Let's see here. What do, you, if, what do you do if you're playing higher strings? How do you mute the lower ones? Well, that's a good question. Let's look at that a little bit, okay? So let's say we were doing something. Okay, so this gets into my chord. So I'm gonna show you a couple of chords here that are more funky. And again, no particular song or anything like that necessarily, but just, just kind of looking at some things that we could do with this, okay? So the next thing I want to show you is, before we get into chords, I'm going to show you octaves, which are very funky, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to play the seventh fret of the fifth string and the ninth fret of the third string, okay? Now, sometimes I play this with my pinky. You might play with your, thir your third finger, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? But the point is, when I press on that fifth string and that third string, I'm deadening out all the other strings the same way I've been showing you. So I deaden out everything with my first finger, I deaden out the sixth string by touching it with the tip of my first finger. And now I can control those strings. So I'm still doing that same kind of strum. Right? But now I'm controlling the strings by deadening out what I don't want and pushing down on what I do want. You see? So I can press in when I want something and just lift when I don't, and I kill the strings. Mm -hmm. 
See that? I mean, it's a really cool effect is learning how to do octaves. Now, again, I have other videos that go into far bigger detail with octaves if those are brand new to you. Okay, but just start by just trying this one. Just pressing on seven on the fifth string, nine on the third string, and then deaden out everything like we've been talking about. And believe me, I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at some of you. So if this is brand new, you're probably going, well, I need to practice this stuff. Yes, you do. I'm just trying to finish up our conversation and then you've got this stuff you can come to later, okay? So don't feel overwhelmed at all. You can always come back and watch it as many times as you need to. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of chords that are pretty cool for playing more funk and more groove stuff. The first one I'm going to show you here is the seventh chord that looks like this. I'm playing seven, six, seven, five. So I'm playing seven with my third finger, six with my middle finger, seven with my pinky, and five with my first finger. And then these two strings I'm not playing. I'm deadening out these outside E strings. And again, there's that whole groove thing. It's still there. It's always there when I'm trying to create this sort of thing. Okay? Okay? So the next chord we're going to look at here is what we refer to as the sharp nine chord, which you might have, a lot of people refer to it as the um, purple haze chord, which is seven, six, seven again, but this time I'm using my middle finger, then first finger, then third finger, and then my pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. And again, deadening out the two, the six and first strings. See, I can add that sixth string. Because again, I'm leaving, I'm taking this finger away from that string. And then it's coming in, and it's killing that string. Uh, does this groove technique relate to reggae? Yes, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. It's just slow down. With a lot of upstrums tend to be. You know, that sort of thing. But yeah, absolutely, it totally works with that. Okay? Next chord I'm going to show you, which is a really fun chord, is instead of playing what we call the E sharp nine, now I'm playing all this on E on the seventh fret here, which is E. You could move these wherever you want it to go. So the next one I'm going to play is seven, six, and then seven, 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 sorry, seven, 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 right there. Which sounds really, really cool. Now I'm barring with this third finger over those bottom three strings at the same time. So I have middle finger here, first finger here, and then third finger pressing on all three of those. Okay, now let's say you tried that and you really hated how that felt, okay? What you could do is drop the middle finger, which is the, the root, the E, you could drop that and just play this, which is the six, seven, 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 and it would still be an E9 chord. You just wouldn't have the E in the bass is all. That chord right there, seven, 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 six, which is again, really an E9, I'm just not playing the E there. I use this in uh, another Stevie Ray, or Stevie Wonder song, excuse me. See? So that's a, another really common chord, but these sound really funky. They've got a really cool groove to them, so they're worth kind of exploring and see what you can do. Okay, so hopefully this is enough information to get you started on thinking about groove, you know, thinking about funk a little bit. I didn't want to make this just about funk music because we use it in blues, we use it in rock, we use it in reggae. Um, we use it all over the place, okay? But it's just a really great way of learning how to play so everything doesn't have to feel so cro magnon Again, I, I don't know what a better word is. It's what I've always used, but... And there's nothing wrong with that either. Sometimes that's what it needs. You know, I always think of like um, this song. <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's just really driving and it sounds great because of that, because it's got that kind of groove. So there's no good or bad, it's just figuring out what's gonna work best for you. 
So everybody, thank you so much for your time. Take care, stay positive, keep practicing. Um, if you're interested, um, Guitar Zoom now has what's called the VIP membership, and there's a link down in the description below that you can check out. It's a uh, it, videos I release every every month, new videos. Um, you can you can go to the page and learn more about it. But basically, it's just bite-sized information, kind of like what we did today, only it would be a little bit less. And the videos are for you to absorb every month so you can keep getting better without always feeling overwhelmed. That's really the point, okay? So everybody take care, stay positive, and um, let people know about the, the Steve Stein Guitar Channel. I sure would appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon.